that this is not supposed to happen. Um, animal control will simply not enforce the law, and they said as much. Um, this dog was sweet and friendly when he moved in, and now he's deemed dangerous. And because he's deemed dangerous, there's a provision in the law that allows him to be chained 24-7. Um, and in July, a new dog arrived at this house. He was left on a fence post on a four-foot leash for months. Um, and for months, I took pictures and called animal control. Um, they would respond, but they came and said they denied anything was wrong, even though the dog couldn't access food or water or shelter. <clears throat> he finally got on a trolley after three months. Um, and. This escalated um, last Thursday night when both of their dogs got in a fight and I witnessed the owner beating the dog over the head with a piece of wood. I thought it was a two by four. Um, I had video of this. My partner called the animal control dispatch number. They gave him another number to call where he received it. He got an answering machine. We decided that we should call 911. Um, so we called 911 and the same dispatcher that answered the animal control number answered 911 and said um, this is not an emergency, they wouldn't send anyone out and, and that we were abusing 911. Um, on Friday I brought this video to, to Sheriff Cree. He agreed that the dogs should be removed but an hour later he called back. He said he spoke to the owner and she was compliant so she could keep the dog. Um, the other dog was taken by a felon that lives there and nobody can find him. Um, I, I can't even describe the experience of seeing this. Um, not only the woman beating her dog, but seeing this dog chain for four years. Um, you hear about this, but seeing it happen in front of you is a whole different horrific experience. Um, I can't sleep. I'm afraid to leave my house because I have to see this every day. Um, I've completely lost faith in the police and in 911. I always felt that if I called 911 that somebody would come and I learned that this is not the case. So there's multiple issues here. There's a law regarding chaining dogs that's not being enforced. Um, <clears throat> I've asked the sheriff about this, and he gave me two non reasons. The first was, unfortunately, we can't force people to spend time with their animals. And the second was, not everyone can afford a fence, so it's better to chain the dogs than to let them loose. Um, the other issue is 911. Why wouldn't 911 respond to this call? Um, and why is a dog owner allowed to keep a dog that she's beat? Um, even though she was beating it to break up a dog fight. Um, and where do I go for help when the sheriff won't do anything? And I have pictures of the dog. The dog is sick and it is lots of me. So, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Yamuna Devi, and I have been a page on Facebook called Tell's Pet Connection. We have over 2,000 members on this page, most from this community. Some are transients that are here part time. On this page, month after month, we're deluged with people complaining about animal cruelty issues that are not being addressed. Repeated calls to animal control, repeated calls to different authorities about these issues. Nothing is ever done. It's heartbreaking. In lieu of a speech, I received this email last night from someone who asked to remain anonymous, a member of our community. I'd like to read this to you. <coughs> Dear Cal's County Commissioners, I cannot be at this meeting today. However, I'm very concerned about animal welfare in the community. <coughs> Although I wish to remain, remain anonymous due to fear of retaliation, this is a repeated theme that comes up on the page. I'm afraid to speak out. Somebody's going to do something to me or hurt my animals. Um, due to fear of retaliation, I ask that you please take my concerns into consideration and do something about the precious animals in this community that are being neglected and abused. I have a neighbor who has a beautiful brown short-haired dog. I think he's a puppy that is in a cage 10 by 10 foot 
24-7. Poor animal never socialized. He has a bone in his little cage, a big stick and some balls to entertain himself. Although I believe the dog gets food and water, I've never seen the owner interact with him, nor do I ever see him get any kind of exercise, no walks or fetch. His only exercise seems to be running in circles in his tiny cage with a huge stick in his mouth. Every weekend and every evening that my family and I are home, we have to listen to this poor dog howl and whimper. This is constant and heartbreaking. He gets no attention. The owner has made him a house inside the cage made of plywood. I assume the owner thinks this will keep him warm now that the temperature is dropping. Remember the horrendous rain and winds that we had a couple weeks ago? Every now and then, my heartbroken son will walk over to the cage and say hi to the dog. Last weekend, my son came home so sad after he checked on him and saw that he had no water and he smelled like a skunk had sprayed him. My husband and I were torn apart when our son told us, and after hearing the dog howl and went for the rest of the weekend, I made a complaint. Days later, we noticed the dog was no longer whimpering or howling. We thought maybe the owner had some compassion and decided to give the dog some love and affection. While walking our dog, my husband went near the cage and saw the dog have an electronic collar on it. We believe the owner put a bark collar on it to prevent the dog from howling. I guess this was the fix instead of paying attention to the dog. Now the poor thing can't even bark if there's a problem. The sad situation has left my family dreading leaving our house and coming home because we have to see this poor helpless animal. I wake up in the middle of the night and wonder if he was left outside again and if he'll survive the cold. I heard that some of the neighbors have complained about the neglect of this poor dog, but nothing has been done. Yes, some say at least the dog has shelter, food and water, and isn't running loose. But is it really okay for someone to have a pet and not pay any attention to it and keep it confined for life in a tiny cage? How can this be legal? Why can't there be laws mandating owners to exercise dogs and bring them in when it is cold? And if there are laws addressing these issues, why aren't they enforced? This poor dog you know, will not make it through the winter if something isn't done. He will freeze to death. And if he doesn't freeze to death, he'll live a life of loneliness and isolation. How can this be right? There are laws on the book providing for animals. But when animal control goes out, they see a plywood house and a couple of bowls, that's okay. No, it's not. A dog needs more than that. Especially when a dog living outside to be comfortable, to have any kind of peace of life. This chaining of dogs 24-7 produces nothing but aggression produces problems. These dogs literally psychologically go crazy. They're insane. They're going insane being on these chains with no one to speak up, with no one to do anything. And it's time that we have an animal control that cares about the animals. It's not just a job of getting a paycheck. Um, I've worked with animal control in other places than Taos. And there's a different aspect of compassion where animal control is there to fight for the animals, not protect owners because they're related, not protect violators because they're friends, um, a, a fear of being popular. Being an animal control officer isn't about being popular. It's about stepping up and doing the right thing and fighting for these animals. And this is my tax money goes into this, and that's what I would like to see happen as a taxpayer. Everybody here, public servants, we need to be served. These animals need to be served. And I think we need to look at what's really going on in this county because it is deplorable. And I ask that you take this all into consideration and to, to really take these cases seriously. They're not just an animal. They're not just an animal. They're a sentient being with feelings just the same as we have. Thank you for your time. Anyone else? Yes. Good morning. I'm Cindy Lucas. I'm the new director at Stray Hearts Animal Shelter. And I've been aware of these complaints because I've been following the pages as well. We get some calls about these certain things, and because we are limited with staff for us, and we don't really have 
any true jurisdiction to assist. What we can help with is education. We can help with supplies. If an animal does need to do housing, we're more than willing to find houses with straw and to do an education program with the specific owners. We ask that you do take these concerns seriously. In addition to that, I would like to commend our animal control officers. I see them every single day at Stray Hearts. Sometimes I see Linda several times a day. Anytime we need them, we, all we have to do is call. She's right there. So I know they have a difficult job, and I appreciate everything everybody does. And I thank you for your time for allowing us to speak about this today. And I hope you pay, really do pay attention to some of the concerns. It just seems to be a, a terminal thing. So if there's anything that we can do as Stray Hearts, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Um, I, I've kind of had this in my head for about a week now, but I want to thank the county for their collaboration with the town and getting uh, some major roads done. The middle road, I guess they're working on, Salazar all the way to Chamisa, and, uh, and the town also paving roads like crazy, you know, all the, the infrastructure is looking real great to me. Anyways, thank you. Thank you. Sir? Good morning, my name is uh, Dan Smith. Uh, early this year, spring, uh, we were living in a house in Kentucky. <coughs> And there was a group of dogs, we believe there's a puppy breeding operation. There was a rotating cast of four to six dogs that were in small, confined cages without food or water most of the time. Um, we gave half a dozen or more calls to animal control. We um, submitted uh, pictures and other evidence uh, about the treatment of the animals. Um, this issue continued on um, for months on end, um, and every day we would see these dogs chained up um, outside our house. Uh, it was very disturbing and um, it continued. We have since moved in the summer we moved, uh, but my partner checked on the operation this morning and it's still going on with the same conditions. So I would also like to voice my experience uh, with that issue. And uh, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Year. And uh, 
I just, um, I don't know what the exact problem is. Um, I don't want to put it on any one animal control officer. It's just that uh, there's not, maybe there's not enough of them. Maybe they're overworked and out of their minds with uh, just being overwhelmed. But sometimes, um, see, I don't think an animal is in good shape if he's left in a dirty yard where his feces is all around him because he's on a chain. You know, when an animal's on a chain or a rope, it has so much so much area, they poop and they pee and they eat in the same place. And um, this in itself is cruelty. And I've been on many rescues where I've been chain, uh, maybe the chain's caught up in a rug or something in this trashy yard, and the animal finally has freedom on the chain, because it's a long chain, and the first thing he does is go poop way far away from where, he's, where his uh, so-called house is. I think also that uh, we put very specific uh, specifications in the ordinance what a house, a dog house should look like, what it should provide, rather, I should say. You go to most of these houses uh, and you look at what the dogs are staying in and they're just little lean-to sheds or they're so thin. Everybody thinks an igloo is wonderful. An igloo is a PVC. I mean, you, are you saying PVCs get warmer in the winter? No. You might as well just put your, your animal in a car and close the door. So there are specific things, both in the town and the county ordinance, that uh, is the law. But that doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be acknowledged. And what happens here in this county, and you know, I've been doing this for years and years, what happens is that the people that really work to make the changes and get involved in the community get tired. They just get overwhelmed and washed out. And so I just sometimes wonder what the hell do we have a twenty uh, a current animal ordinance for? I, I you know when when I proposed in the previous animal ordinance before the 2015 I don't know I think it was 2011 um, about no chaining that committee everybody says well they're not going to follow that law they're, you're not going to stop chaining and I said well no. We're not going to have animal control officers knock on every door in the county and see if their dog is chained. But at least it's on the books, and if it comes up, you've got that law to refer back to. Um, I applaud Leanna for coming up here and, and speaking. I, I know that this is not going anywhere. Um, and I'm not, it's not, I'm not being negative, it's just a reality. As you know, we've been through this so many times. I went to the highest, highest person in the county, uh, Manager Cordova, where do you go from there? You know, uh, what kind of help does the sheriff need? Um, I, I just don't know. At this point, I've been doing this for so long that uh, I don't know what the answers are anymore. And you knock yourself out trying to make a change. It's, um, you know, and I'll put real quickly, several years ago, around 2002, um, we, had a, we had an issue with the Pueblo, which is nothing we can really do with lawfully. And um, because, of, because of, because I was working with the Chamber of Commerce then, um, what, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, what we did is we got this changed on the Pueblo because we threatened the tourism industry on, on the Pueblo. And I'll tell you, how, that was pretty fast change. That was a pretty, that night, one night, they had, um, I had contacted the war chief, the uh, director of tourism, and uh, the uh, governor. That night, when I, had, after I sent them a, a, a letter, um, they had gotten a hold of Santa Fe, got the vans in here from Santa Fe, picked up the dogs. Uh, Channel 4 News was down there filming it. They took the dogs, because a woman had come up to me in Salazar Vet and said that, Trish, can you help, please? She was French, she's a Pueblo woman. Um, she said they're 
going to start shooting the dogs. This is in April. And according to her, they would shoot the dogs before tourism season. They dig a big hole and put the dogs in there and stand around their rifles and shoot them. Now, this came from Pueblo people. This is not a rumor that I heard you know, over there or over there. And so uh, we changed that. Now, I'm not saying this still doesn't go on, but uh, that massive killing of dogs is not going on like that. Um, because it was so public, the, sh the Pueblo was very concerned about their tour tourism dollars. Is that what we have to do with Taos? I mean, that'll freak everybody out, won't it? I could, uh, so it's just, I don't know where to go from here. And um, that's all I have to say. And I say thank you for the time. Thank you, Trish. Um, Deanna, do you have, can we see those pictures? And, and go ahead, please come up and, and, uh, and uh, Hi, my name is Marina Alberia. Um, I just wanted to echo the, the feeling of fear. When we lived across from that house and we were calling, it was terrifying. It was terrifying because the kinds of people when people get to the point where they abuse creatures that way, it doesn't stop with dogs. They're mean to their brothers. They're mean to their neighbors. They use violence and guns, and we have a problem with that in this place. So we need to start taking action so that children don't grow up seeing dogs on leashes and in pens and think that it's okay and treat then their other high school students with abuse and violence. We need to really look at how we show compassion in this community and we need to try to grow that so that it's a safer place for all of us. Thank you. Okay, any, any short comments or do we want to? <coughs> yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, this is an important issue and a long-standing problem. We do have an ordinance that um, does prevent wounded animals. I can't remember all the specifics of it. Uh, I don't know if Sheriff Holbrook has anything that he would like to say today. But, um, if not, I, I would like to make this an agenda item for the future in that case so that we can have a full discussion. You know, uh, I, I did like the idea of uh, Stray Hearts working with the Sheriff's Department on education and, and possibly providing uh, some supplies and help to uh, some of those pet owners. Um, but it is an important issue, and uh, since it's just a, 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 on the agenda of citizens' concerns, we're not prepared for a full discussion and certainly no decisions, but I, for one, I would ask that we put it on a future agenda. Okay. Commissioner Romero. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I, I just think that there needs to be more collaboration between the Sheriff's Office and our administration. You know, more work on these issues. You know, if, if these things, we know these things happen. You know, they're just ratifying all the horrible things that happen in the community with regards to, uh, not on, unfortunately, not only just our animals, but it moves up to, to children and spouses. And, and everyone else later on. So it, it is an epidemic, Mr. Chairman. We need to, to work um, closer to be able to accomplish what we want to accomplish with regards to animal control. It's, it's a very sad thing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just think maybe at some point we need to revisit having casuals in the summer uh, that work with stray hearts and work specifically on education 
and assisting the sheriff in uh, helping these people um, to learn how to take care of their animals. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. I, I, I do also agree. Um, I want to make sure that uh, we do have this on the agenda item that we'll be able to discuss what the ordinance completely says. Uh, make sure that we're all still feeling that it's pretty solid and we don't have any holes, any gaps that, that these people are getting themselves through. And definitely, you know, I, I think that not only the Sheriff's Department, but every department would want to have enough officers, enough help to be out there. How do we address that? We got to figure that out. How do we educate those that are going to be out there representing us out there in the, in, in all agencies? Maybe we need to reevaluate that and make sure that it's clearly understood how the ordinance is read and how they follow through with the processes. Now, we don't know those answers. We're going to have to figure those out. But I think that um, you know you probably came in a great day. I think all of us have a heavy heart for the, for your comments, and, and we're willing to sit down and. and review it again. You know, maybe it's something that we consider as we get ourselves set up for uh, the springtime when we can start reviewing our, our budget that we look at what we can do again there. But, um, you know, I, I think our Sheriff's Department, uh, maybe the communication as far as uh, what has to happen in dispatch, maybe we clean up a little bit of things that, and maybe and make sure we lead people to the right phone number or to the person that's going to be able to help most. So at least there's some assurance that there's going to be a follow-up. So there's some things that we probably got to work on, and, and, and this is a document that can always be amended. It's a living document. It's not set in stone. So we can we can review it, and we'll try to set primers again and push it out there again and see if it doesn't, if it fails, we can bring it back and do it again. So I'm sure that we will in agreement that uh, Mr. Corr will put this on the next agenda item in the future. We need to put where our agenda looks like in the next month or so and see what we can do. Thank you for all your comments. Anybody else with the comments? Save you for last, sure. <laughs> Absolutely, thanks, uh, Sheriff Jerry Hogarth. Um, the matter that Ms. Light spoke about and, and came and saw me on Friday and provided me a video uh, is under investigation. I actually have uh, employment Hopefully he'll keep it with the owner of the Husky Dog for tomorrow. It's not a dead issue. It's not whatsoever. And <clears throat> I want to also point out that citation and enforcement action was taken. Um, that dog owner, uh, her name's Abby, was cited. And we are awaiting adjudication in court for that matter. Unfortunately, with the backlog we have in court, as I've been explaining to, to Ms. Lyon and, and and anyone else, that is scheduled for December 6th. That's how far back we are for the manager of court to adjudicate not only animal issues, but people issues. It is bad. With that, um, the, the gentleman that spoke back here, um, I wasn't aware of that one. I am now. And I've already sent the email directing animal control to go to that house on Kachia Road to check that out. Um, I, I don't, I'm not going to turn it into a trial here in front of the commission. This is not the appropriate venue for that. However, um, when a dog gets off chain and is fighting with another dog, I would expect the owner to do some reasonable action to break them up and not just stand there. Getting with a board is still, in my mind, uh, questionable. Was that the appropriate thing? Could there have been other actions to separate two very large, large dogs from fighting? Don't have the answer to that. Um, that's going to be coming from our district attorney's office for review. I did talk to um, Mexico Dog, uh, which is an advocacy group at the state level, and also Animal Humane's from the state. Explained it to him. He's in agreement with me. If you look at the state law on um, the animal use, uh, that there is a section, I believe it's B2. It's pretty clear about separating dogs from fighting, from harming one another. I think that's going to be the offense, but I'm not ready to, to firmly state that. And if it's not, then we'll move forward. We can't simply cite people uh, on cases that we know we can't be in. Same thing with people, humans, uh, you know, shoplifting and other minor crimes. 
We can't do it there. We can't do it with animal abuse, which could rise to a felony in this matter. Um, so there's a lot of dynamics in moving. Um, Mr. Cordova gets the animal intake log from Stray Heart. You can clearly see from that on my animal controls are not amazing. They're out there working. They're bringing a lot of animals, strays, and other animals to the shelter on a daily basis. And then we work with the shelter and back in on that state. Um, can we do more? Yeah, probably. Do we need more staff? Absolutely. We need that. So with that, I just wanted to give just that brief explanation. I'm very approachable. I'll say it in front of the camera to the viewing public. Anybody that wants to contact me, I'm very transparent. My door's open. If I've got another commitment, I will set up a time and meet with you. Um, Ms. Light can attest to that. Uh, Penny and Trish, we guys Trish mm -hmm. to assist this family with hay straw bales um, for a winter shelter for the remaining shepherd that's at this property on Garcia Road. So we have taken a lot of steps. We are doing um, quite a bit. I personally went out and assumed the investigation on Garcia Road. I uh, even came in on Saturday and worked on that matter myself. So these are not being ignored. That's all I've got to say. Thank you, Sheriff. Go ahead and close public comment. It is 946.47-ish. And we'll move on. Thank you for your comments, everyone. Next time is presentations. This is a discussion regarding the following. It's an update on high-intensity drug trafficking area project. Thank you, Sheriff. Hold it. The HIDA initiative that we've been working on for nearly two years uh, has come to pass. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased. HIDA stands for High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area. Towns County was not designated as such, although our neighboring counties in Region 3, uh, Rio, Riva, and Santa Fe were. We have finally passed all the final hurdles. We have our federal uh, um, blessing and have been um, joined into HIDA Region 3. I hope to have that formal letter and a small presentation about what uh, or where we go from here and what resources would be available to us uh, since the meeting that we had last Thursday in Santa Fe. Unfortunately, I do not have that. Uh, Hyde right now has a, a funding issue of freeze, but that will be freed up soon, hopefully by what they told us in the meeting, by Thanksgiving time. What that brings to Taos County is additional resources to combat the drug trafficking problem here in our area. Not only users, but dist distribution and a higher level of trafficking. I'm excited about this because it brings um, those resources to us, and in return, all I have to do is share my resources with the region. Um, our resources would be personnel when they have a, a, a bust or something that needs to happen in Rio Rio or Santa Fe counties, I've, I've agreed to make my personnel or at least some of us available to assist them uh, for undercover work. Um, we can share those resources as well. And the, the best part of this is Taos Tribal Police Department has also bought into to this and has agreed to share their resources and an investigator, as has the town of Taos. Uh, they're going to share an investigator as well. And of course, I will once I get an investigator replaced. Uh, for you who don't know, Detective Sully Dongagos is taking his pair of retirement. He has his time to put in, so he will be leaving us. We will be in a transitional period until I make that replacement. Um, it's undecided yet whether we'll be doing that internally or, or outside. <clears throat> but I, I do think we have talents within that will be pulling from for that. The other thing is undercover vehicles, buy monies, and other things now become available to us through Region 3. In two years from now, I, th I think we're going to see um, this is a very positive thing in combating the drug problem in our community. I'm excited about it. Um, we've worked really hard. Many of us in the community have worked really hard and really long to get this. We've had struggles along the way um, with potentially having uh, to sign an MOU for immigration as a condition of us getting high designation of those resources. Thank God that didn't. That didn't happen. We didn't have to go there. Uh, 
it's a good thing. The money starts from the federal level. It's administrated uh, down through the state and into the local regions, and the 21 regions that are out in Mexico. We are region three. Um, I just wanted to give you that update. Uh, at a later time, if the commission is interested, I could have a PowerPoint and talk about uh, statistics and, and show some photos or things or the layouts of how it actually works. But for today's purposes, I just wanted to let you know that we finally, finally got our blessing and we're high to high County, which I think is only a, a win-win for us. I'd stand for any questions. Sure. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to thank you, Sheriff, for your initiative and your persistence in this. It is really important. It does provide us with more resources. Uh, and, I, and I agree with you that in, in a couple of years we'll, we'll see some positive results. Obviously, like many of our problems, including the animals, it's uh, not entirely solvable. It's, you know, realistically, we're never going to do without some of these problems, but the fact that your department is uh, focusing on this and, and has uh, accomplished this, uh, no one else uh, ever ever worked on it before. So I really appreciate it on uh, behalf of the commission and community and personally. Uh, and thank you also for addressing the animal concerns in the way that you did. Absolutely. Thank you, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, have you had any Narcan um, overdose lately? Have you had to administer Narcan recently, or? Deputies have not. As you're aware, we began our program in May of 2016. Uh, in our first year of having deputies uh, armed with Narcan in their control units, we did administer seven times and had seven successful reversals. Those are, for lack of better terms, lives saved due to, to carrying an Um I believe the last one we had was probably two months ago. So we continue to, to carry it and to have it. I'm working with the Department of Health on that. Our, our Narcan actually expires uh, coming in December and the Department of Health, as you are aware, that stuff's kind of expensive. The Department of Health is Kind of still in negotiations, waffling a little bit of wanting to give us that for free. I'm um, still working on that. I don't want to lose that program. I think it's a very positive thing and it saves lives. Thank you, Sheriff, and I appreciate it. It was great news that uh, there's no immigration uh, attached to this. I uh, appreciate that. And, and thank you guys for the support all the way through this. Um, you know, county manager and I talked about this. It's no secret that probably six months ago I was ready to throw up my hands and say forget it it's just, you know but um, perseverance i guess paid off so now we just pick it up from here and, and move forward we share those resources and, and abilities and we've got to get some training that's mandated by the federal government um, so myself and, and an investigator will be doing that for the uh, computer usage and deconfliction of cases and, and certain things like that so um, we've got some training aspects to it as well and I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to get it done. In fact, I asked them that day, I said, can I just do it today? I'm already here. <laughs> they said, no. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything else? That's it, I think. Uh -huh. On that point. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you for your time. All right, commissioners, the next item is the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda below have been reviewed for the purpose of voting on all items with one vote. The items listed are for the commission to consider and have a decision. I'll go ahead and read those out. Item A is approval of the job description for records warrant clerk for E911 Department, Dominic Martinez, coordinator. Item B is resolution 2017-53, a resolution authorizing the requesting participation of funding in the New Mexico Department of Transportation DOT uh, year 2017-2018 local road fund program co-op SB funding cooperative agreement. Mr. Pacheco is here. Item C is resolution 2017-54. This is a resolution designating precinct locations and official polling places within Taos County. Ms. Ana Martinez is here as well. Item D is approval of purchase of Kenworth <coughs> 80 transport truck for the Public Works Department. Item E is approval of the juvenile adjudication fund grant agreement 
18-J-30, fiscal year 18. Commissioners, what is your pleasure? Well, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. I'll go in a second, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Martinez, would you please call the roll? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Commissioner O'Donnell? Yes. yes. Commissioner Blankenhart? Yes. Vice Chair Gagos? Yes. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Item 8 is a resolution and ordinance. Commissioner, this is approval resolution 217-52, a resolution adopting the House County Adult Detention Center policies and procedures dated October 17, 2017. Mr. Obeta is here. Oh, he stepped out. He stepped out. He stepped out. Uh, please come up and, and uh, if there's any questions from the commission, we can, you guys can tag team this if it comes back in. Uh, at this point, uh, I don't believe we have any questions for the commission. Uh, if the commission has any questions for us. Commissioners? I just want, Mr. Chen, I just want to say thank you so much. This is a great policy and procedure. I guess it was reviewed by NMAC. Uh, what were those substantial changes, or what specifically did they did they, they tweak? They uh, tweaked a few of the uh, mail policies. They felt that they wanted us to utilize their sample policy for their mail. Uh, their language on it was a little more clear, and it uh, provided for a little more scrutiny of incoming mail. Was that it? That was. They had a few other minor recommendations. But that was really it. The rest of the policies were, were fairly in line with what they had expected. Commissioner Gay, okay, Mr. Commissioner Dowd, if I could add to that. Um, they also uh, adopted, I believe, a model suicide prevention policy recommended by NMAC, as well as um, segregation policies and management of special detainees. Um, we also had them review. Um, search and seizure for special detainees, transgender detainees, um, and I believe all of the adopted, all of the suggested model policies were adopted by NMAC, but it's something that Andrew, myself, and uh, NMAC were pretty close to on those hot button issues, so those are some significant changes. How many pages did it end up being this time? I got it down to 301. <laughs> <laughs> it was a labor of love. It was originally about 540, and, and uh, Andrew, we're, I have to, I can't give enough credit to Andrew, we really worked on a daily basis to get it <laughs> pocket-sized and, and reasonable. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good. I will make a motion if, uh, when there's no other questions here. Yeah, uh, question. yeah, since they brought that up, I just wondered what some of the uh, additional provisions for suicide prevention were. Uh, Hiding checks was a main one. Uh, also, screenings. Uh, once somebody has been identified as somebody that's a suicide risk, uh, there's additional screening measures that need to be taken uh, to monitor them through our mental health and medical departments. Uh, and then there's uh, a little bit more that has to do with uh, how they're to be dressed and how they're going to be, they're to be handled uh, once, they're, once they're identified. Thank you. Good job. We just wanted to see you uh, Oh, okay. Good morning, <laughs> Good morning <laughs> commissioners, uh, county manager, and where you uh, Again, uh, as Andrew has mentioned, you know, he's been very instrumental in assisting with uh, the revision of policies and procedures for the adult detention. As a result, uh, we now have policies that uh, fit uh, NMAC standards. And uh, what I am looking forward to now is uh, starting our folders for accreditation process. Uh, it is very important, you know, and again, without Andrew, I don't know where we would be. So I do owe him a lot. You know, I uh, initially generated the policies, and then after Andrew looked through them, uh, there was a lot of work that went and that was involved. As a result, we now have policies that I hope that the Commission can adopt and will adopt uh, this way we can move forward in our in our accreditation process. Are you guys tag team it just right? You guys seem to be working really well. And right. Didn't miss a beat. Uh, there was a motion on the floor. Yes. Is there any other question? 
Mr. Chairman, I would like to move that we approve resolution number 2017-52, a resolution adopting the Towers County Adult Detention Center policies and procedures. I'll go ahead and second, Mr. Chairman. No other discussion? Mr. Martinez, please call the vote. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner Obama? Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn? Yes. Vice Chair Gagos? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. Thank you very much. Cherry Love, thank you very much. <laughs> If I could just take a second to thank everybody, Ms. Robinson, Lieutenant uh, Warden, thank you all for your very, very long process, but a lot of hard work, and we do have a great product. And as the Warden mentioned, this is just the start to many more things that we're trying to accomplish over there at the detention center, so I just want to thank the staff. They work really, really hard. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner's next item is uh, contract agreements and we use bids. This is item A, approval of contract PCC-217-59 and contract for Big Hills County and UNM School of Medicine, UNM Medical Group, UNM Consortium of Medical Directors for Fire EMS Services and Cal Central Dispatch. Mr. Joaquin, good morning, uh, Commissioners, Leandro, Coyla. It's been a while since I came up and she presented to you. And a great item that we've been working on um, as of July. Uh, we've been working on this contract. Uh, we currently have uh, Dr. Dixon, who has verbally agreed to uh, take over as medical director, who is a part of the um, UNM consortium team. Um, it's a great, great uh, team of doctors, seven doctors out of UNM Hospital, who will be overseeing our medical direction for Cal County and E911. Any questions for Mr. Gonzalez? Commissioners? Hearing none, but I have to take a motion to approve. So moved. I'll second Mr. Chairman. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Martinez, please call the vote. Commissioner Armado? Yes. Commissioner O'Donnell? Yes. Commissioner Blakenhorn? Yes. Commissioner Gagos? Yes. Thank you, Joaquin. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could just make, make a, a comment. comment. Only a comment. No it's, questions. It's good to see you here. Thank you. And I hope we see more of you. I would really like to get quarterly reports from you so we can get an idea of what kind of calls you're responding to, <coughs> drug overdose, heart attacks. I, I just like to see that data. So uh, that would be something you could work with the county manager and maybe we could see more than we have seen you in the past. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Sounds good. I'm usually busy in the office or running calls on the truck. So. That's probably why you want to see them so, so often. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is that again, County Manager Report and Matters. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I want to take a quick second to also thank um, Director Gonzalez and Ms. Robinson for working on that contract. That was a rather labor of love, and um, we weren't sure if we were going to get that through. We only had a lot of demand, and Ms. Robinson called back, and we got what we asked for. Thanks, staff, again. Um, I'll try and be quick. I have a few items. First, I want to start with the request that we received from Water County to act as a fiscal agent on behalf of Water County. Water County needs to purchase a new ambulance, and so they have received a capital appropriation along with a loan from the Finance Authority, but their audit does not allow them to be their own fiscal agent. So the need is dire for them to have this ambulance. They've reached out to us, and I just wanted to let the Commission know that we will likely be moving forward to uh, assist them. It should not be too difficult of a purchase. Uh, Director Gonzalez does this every couple years and he'll buy a new one or remount and so it's not, nothing we haven't done before and uh, it is important for our time to need that ambulance. Uh, we also have a similar request from the Village of Cuesta to be their fiscal agent for appropriation for water projects. So um, both of these should come before us at the next agenda or the next agenda for us to approve so that um, we can get started on those projects for these two entities. Uh, there's no question on that. I wanted to talk about our True Connect. Taos County, as you know, was entering into an agreement with True Connect to provide loans for our staff. Um, that is complete and, and um, I want to commend staff, HR Finance as well, for reaching out to our banking partner, US Bank, 
to look for other options as well. So we do have Trip Connect as a tool for our staff, but US Bank will also be an option for them with even lower rates and a little bit better um, opportunity to build credit. So I thank staff for looking even beyond what we have as True Connect because True Connect is an opportunity and it is much better than payday loan, but it's still a high interest rate and it doesn't necessarily come as um, no strings attached as it was promised. There's a few other quirks to it, so it's there for staff that need it, but we're not selling it. We're also not selling anything for US Bank, but there's options. And I just want to thank staff for providing more options for our employees. Um, wanted to let the commission know that I have a meeting this afternoon in Santa Fe with the Finance Authority um, to discuss options for our 2008 loan um, here for the complex. Uh, those bond loans come with a redemption after 10 years. So with the 2008 loan, 2018 gives us the opportunity for redemption and it does sound like we have some options. So I'll come back to the board with what those options are after I sit down with the Finance Authority. I hope it means saving. I would potentially new money for projects that we all know where in the queue for the hopper. So I'm excited about that. Um, I also will be stopping by the DOT this afternoon on my way. We have one more issue with the Herdner deed, so we have to go back for one more signature. So just a bunch of little um, problems that we're catching, but it's better to catch them before you adopt it and then have to go back and do it over again. So you'll see that by November. I definitely will move out of our problem there. Uh, I've been requested by the Mortgage Finance Authority Board to speak and their next meeting on Wednesday or next week, they'll be meeting here in Taos. Um, Mr. Angel Reyes is a very integral part of that board um, from Sentinel Bank and he has asked me and I think he's asking the mayor to speak to that board um, in terms of some of the positives here in Taos County and any collaborative efforts that we have <coughs> taken on. So Herdner will be a big topic that we'll bring up and just along with all our other collaborative efforts with the town, the village of Cuesta, Taos, or Taos Ski Valley, I think it's important that boards from across the state realize that we're working together here in Taos County to get things done and save taxpayer dollars, so that's going to kind of be the focus of my, my talk to them. So that will be Wednesday at the town of Taos um, Council Chambers. So uh, Chamisa Road, we have issued out a press release where stating that this week we'll begin the prep work for Chamisa Road and we're hoping that we can do the paving by next week or the following week, weather allowing. So we're moving along on the Chamisa Road project that should be complete as soon as weather allows and we're working this week on the prep. So um, grateful for that. The weather turned around a little bit for us so we were able to get that done. As you may have noticed, we completed the ceiling of the parking lot. Uh, I think that went pretty well. We're also going to be doing Buena Vista Road um, real soon here and the same kind of seal. So we'll get a good gauge of how this works by next year. It won't really attack more roads with this kind of technology. And um, also looking at what other options we have on some of our roads. We will potentially look at uh, the cutler process that the town has for the next summer. Uh, I've asked the town manager to include me in any preliminary meetings over the winter to talk to them about what we may be able to do with the cutler for next year as well. We probably will not be paving new roads for a little while here. We got those done. Uh, Chamisa was four of us for kind of the focus for paving new roads, and now it's getting back to really maintaining, as Mr. Pacheco has requested, and, and bridges. So bridges and repairing and maintaining the existing pavement we have and all the work on the roads that we have will be the priority. And I also want to mention that Mr. Pacheco and, and Mr. Jaramillo and Ms. Chavez have been working on our outdated ordinances over the public works and we hope to bring those to you for a future work study soon to really discuss what we feel are outdated or um, just need improvement. And so I commend Mr. Pacheco for reaching out to other counties, looking at other examples out there and, and seeing how we can kind of find tune for Taos County so that we can have a more streamlined, more you know, courage process for a lot of the things that we do in public works. And um, the last thing I'll talk about is the RTC presentation. I know I promised it to you here in October. We 
Lieutenant Mike I has a meeting scheduled tomorrow with CYFD, so um, I went ahead and made the decision to push the presentation to November after that meeting so that he could really provide you a lot more information. Um, things are moving pretty well, and uh, there are a lot of collaborative efforts on that pro um, program, so um, we may even have some pictures for you guys next at the next meeting to show you some of the potential um, look of that facility as they soften it up and make it look more, you know, residential. And it really does soften it up a lot by just pictures. You wouldn't believe that that was a detention center. So we'll provide that to you at the next meeting. And I stand for any questions at this time. Commissioner, it was open for discussion. Mr. Corbett. Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, the True Connect, so that's in place. U.S. Bank, is that in place yet? Um, yeah, we're working on the details, but yes, pretty much anybody that is willing to become a U.S. Bank customer will have those opportunities to them. So because we do bank with U.S. Bank, our treasurer's office, really, um, most of our county monies are at U.S. Bank, so they've been working with us on this and a couple other um, initiatives as well. Do you know what the interest I don't. I don't have that right off. I believe it's more comparable to what you would expect when you go to a bank for a room. So it's it's definitely not the lowest rate that you're going to get out there, but it's lower than the True Connect would have to offer. So the True Connect, how are you going to roll that out? Like with a memo to employees? Or? Um, we're doing an open enrollment coming up in November for our health um, options. So we'll also include that in that open enrollment. As I mentioned, it's really not our task as staff to sell this program. So we'll just allow people to get information at that time. And if it, they want that, they can come to us and we'll put them in the right direction. So with U.S. Bank, is it the same principle as True Connect that the wages are or the, uh, the loans are deducted from the employee's paycheck? Basically, but I believe it gives them even more option than that. It's not guaranteed that it has to come out that way. They are, I do believe they would have to do direct deposit. I think, I think that's the one stipulation. They would have to have a U.S. bank account with direct deposit from the county for their paid check. And then they have different options. The other advantage to U.S. bank is it does go positively toward the credit. Unfortunately, um, True Connect it doesn't really give them as much positive, but if they do, neglect to pay, it would go negatively on your credit. So it does hurt more than it would help. U.S. Bank will help build credit for them to continue to get better interest rate loans. And, and at some point, could you uh, let us know currently how many employees or um, the victims of these loan sharks and are actually having you know, garnishment taken out because they can't pay their loans back at 300%. At some point, if you could just get an idea of if we have employees that are caught in that cycle right now. Um, Mr. Arlano, we could look at that. I don't know how much of that we can share. Even with our garnishments for, you know, other issues, you know, child support, whatever, it's not really something that is allowed to be shared. So I can do what I can to get some rough numbers potentially. I don't know if we even know necessarily. Sometimes our garnishments are not so specific um, for the protection of the individual. So I can't, I can't promise that I can get you that information. I'll try. At some point it would be nice to get a list of who's operating in town, the loan sharks. I just like to know who they are uh, and who owns them. Um, and maybe at some point we might want to consider uh, writing a letter or making sure they're in compliance with the new state law that caps those loans at 175% instead of 300. So um, I've heard that some of these companies are going to go out of business now because of the new um, law by the state legislature. Um, I'd just be curious if we could, I heard there were 13, I'd, I'd like to find out who they are. And then could you speak more about this technology on the roads, a chip, something to do? Um, basically, that's how they sell the, the seals. This is modern technology on different kinds of seals. Um, this was one example of something that wasn't available to us maybe five years ago, and now it is. So that's why I mentioned it is technology. That's kind of how the sales people sell it to us. So I don't know how technological it really is, but it's cutting it. It's new product to us, and it's something we didn't have in our toolbox a few years ago. You mean like the parking lot? Yes, like that type of seal with different box seals that you may have heard. NMDOT is going to do what they call a box seal on US 64. That's something that we're looking at in the future too to see how it could work for us. So, so 
Exactly. And I know you, you say, I'm still waiting for the uh, ranking of the bridges so we can see what bridges are the worst. Um, so we're going to put out a request for some kind of improvement to Cachillo Road in Pinasco. Um, road, you know, there's a dirt section now, there's some issues. If, if you could take a look at that and see if we could just even put a cold mix on that dirt area, if we can't afford to do a total repaving of Cachillo, which isn't too long of a road, um, I'd like to see something done before uh, next year, if that's possible, even if it's just a cold mix. Okay. No, thank you. And then, um, if you could send us the agenda for the New Mexico Finance Authority mortgage meeting. Uh, I can't attend on the 24th, but I, I would like to attend on the 25th. Okay. I don't have the agenda yet. I, will, I have not received the agenda. I was just requested yesterday to speak, so I haven't um, seen the agenda. So when I get it, I will share it with the full board. Thank you. Commissioner Merrill, nothing. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> Since you were complaining, I didn't say anything. <laughs> uh, no, uh, those ceilings, uh, th those can really save us money in the long run, I think. You know, if, if we catch some of the roads that we have paved, and it can really elongate the life of the asphalt. So I'm all in favor of whatever you guys put together on that. Thank you. Good. Well, I don't have anything. Part of us, so thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Next item is commissioners' reports and matters. Item A is commission announcements. Any announcements from the commission tonight? Today. Gee, we're doing good. I know. Do you want to talk? You well, well, I don't have any. Go ahead. I was on the All right, well, uh, do we have any new business? I think that we made a request. Uh, for some new business to be considered in a future commission meeting uh, by way of uh, animal control discussion. Um, potentially some some updates from department heads as well could probably be part of that as, as we'll get into the winter season. If there's anything that's going to be needed from those departments that are working out in the field uh, that we may be able to support them with, we can maybe have them come up and talk about what their projects are for the winter. Uh, Anything else, Commissioner, that we think we need to put for new business? Um, Mr. Chairman, we could, we could get on the agenda soon the uh, request on the accounting of the NMAC conference. Thank you. That'll work. If there's no other discussions for new business to be considered in future commission meetings, I would go ahead and ask the clerk commission to consider the item 12. Uh, this is a discussion regarding the bill of contract from the county attorney. This matter will be discussed in closed session of the Means Act Exemption 1015-1H2, which allows for discussion of limited personal matters. We contain a motion to go in executive session. So Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. Can I do the roll call? Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner O'Donnell? Yes. Commissioner Blankenhart? Yes. Secretary Davis? Yes. All right, it's 11.20. It's 11.23. Let's remember our time. Right. What time is it? We got it. 11.24. 11.24. I'd like to entertain a motion to come out of the executive session. So moved. Thank you. Mr. Martinez, please call roll. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner O'Donnell? Yes. Commissioner Blankenhart? Yes. Vice Chair Davis? Yes, for the record, uh, only the discussion was taking place in executive session under the Open Meetings Act 1015-1H2 of the contract of interim county attorney, and that was all that was discussed. Next item is the discussion and action item. Is this, this is an action item. Uh, discussing the renewal of a contract of interim yeah. Yeah. county Vice management. Chair, we need to vote on the... Oh, you need to vote on my, my right. uh, report, on my report, right? Move to approve the reports presented. Second. Commissioner Romero. Yes. Commissioner O'Donnell. Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn. Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn. Yes. Vice Chair Gagel. Yes. I get mixed up. I should say Claire or Ms. Martinez. I, I just got to pick one of the other. Sorry. Okay. 
Well, since we got that part done, we are the discussion regarding the removal of the contract for internal county attorney commissioners. I entertain a motion from someone to renew the contract for the internal county attorney. Hearing none, the contract will be continued until the termination date of the contract. Okay. Thank you, Commissioners. Next item is adjournment. So we'll it has been made by Commissioner Romero, but there's a second. Yes, we do. Second. Second by Commissioner Blake and Horn. Third call roll. Commissioner Meadow. Yes. Commissioner Gunn. Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn. Yes. Commissioner Gunn. Yes. All right.